morning, Salem. Good morning, Good to see you all. Welcome, welcome. It's an awesome day. It's a day that the Lord set aside for us to worship Him, and you're at the right place for our worship. So we are going to try something new today, different. Instead of I, I pick the hymns, you will pick hymns, uh, the opening hymn. Okay, so we will be singing two or three, and every song you select will sing the first and last verses. Okay? All right, so look for a hymn that you're going to request. All right. So, announcements. First of all, we have lost a uh, couple of saints among us, and uh, La Vida's service will be tomorrow at 10, and then Chilson's service will be on Saturday at 10. Uh, it's just been a tough week. Um, and so we'll have two services this week. All right, and then we have a basketball uh, night for our youth this evening, which starts at 5 o'clock. Uh, they will have a taco dinner or whatever. And then next Sunday, at 4 o'clock, we will meet here in the sanctuary again, and we'll be singing lots of old, good, good old hymns, probably not in our hymnal. So, yeah, if you are uh, one of those that love to sing those goodies, but oldies but goodies, it's for you. And then, after that singing, we will have a little uh, fellowship time at our uh, Family Life Center. And uh, I ask you to bring something to share, like whatever, ice cream, donuts, cookies, <laughs> and some drinks or whatever. I mean, just whatever you bring, I'll be happy to have. I mean, we'll happy to share. So, um, drink actually, uh, Sandy is going to make some punches and stuff, but cookies, ice cream, donuts, or uh, uh, how about pizza? No? Okay. I really don't care. <laughs> Whatever you bring, <laughs> I know I'm going to enjoy it. So let's do that at 4 o'clock. And then we are going to have a garage sale uh, again. And get your closets or whatever you store things in, clean up and get things ready. And uh, you may br start bringing in uh, things and store them in the old uh, fellowship hall. Uh, there is already some stuff from uh, uh, John Bevan's, uh, <coughs> so we will add on uh, to what we have, and then we'll have a uh, 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 garage sale. When are you thinking, Melinda? Okay. April 20th. Yeah, and then there will be taco. Uh, Nancy is going to offer that. So, okay, April 20th. So you start bringing in things for the garage sale. And the proceed will go to our uh, church's general fund, right? Okie dokie. Any other announcements? 
If not, let's come to worship with our opening hymns. 400. Okay. Hey, uh, I'm going to be leading the singings and all. So read, don't turn me off, okay? 400. First and last verses. Come thou font of every blessing to my heart to sing thy grace. Streams of mercy never ceasing call for songs of loudest praise. Teach me some melodious song as sung by flaming tongues of Praise the mount i fixed upon it, mount of thy redeeming love. Oh, to grace, how great a debtor, daily mentioned to be. Let thy goodness, like a fetter, find my wandering heart to thee. Prone to wander, Lord, I feel it. Prone to leave the God I love. Here's my heart, oh, take and seal it. Seal it for thy courts above. Who's got our next song? Three, six, seven. All right. 367. <clears throat> he touched me. <clears throat> Shackled by a heavy burden, Neath a lot of gear, and shame. Then the hand of Jesus touched me, and now I am no longer the same. He touched me, oh, He touched me, and all oh, the joy that flows my soul. Something This blessed the Savior, since He cleansed and made me whole. I will never cease to praise Him. I'll shout in one eternity. He touched me. Something happened and now I know He touched me and made me whole. Oh, I'm loving it. One more. Three sixty one? Two sixty one. Two hundred sixty one. Let's see if I know this song. Oh, Lord of Dance. Yeah, I know this song. We'll be singing first and last. I danced in the morning when the world was begun And I danced in the snow and the stars and the sun and I came down from heaven and I danced on the earth 
at Bethlehem I had my birth. Test wherever you may be. I am the Lord of the dancer, and I'll lead you all wherever you may be, and I'll lead you all in the dance they caught me down and I lift up high. I am the life that'll never, never die. I'll live in you if you live in me. I am the Lord of dance at Dance then, wherever you may be. I am the Lord of the dance at and I lead you all wherever you may be, and I lead you all in the dance at All right, now would you please stand and greet one another in Christ's name? Say, Peace be with you. Come on, guys. Uh, share with me your joys and your concerns. Let's see if there is any birthday celebration this week. No birthdays? How about anniversaries? Who's? Oh, Memphis. He's 11. Jason's birthday is tomorrow. Well, don't be shy about your birthday. Come on. You're going to catch up with your brother. <laughs> All right. Anyone else? Let's sing happy birthday. Uh, anniversaries? No anniversaries. So Julie, just sing happy birthday. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, God bless you. Happy birthday to you. <laughs> Joys and concerns. Well, obviously, again, we have lost two of our saints. Uh, Lavida Williams and Chilson Cook passed away. Uh, so it's been a tough week for me. And then... We have baby Lucy in Wesley Hospital. You want to give us? Okay. Well, I mean, you know, I'll just say uh, she's getting better. But doctors are ch still trying to figure out everything. But she is getting better, doing better. And she's going to be just fine. It's just a matter of time. But I ask you all to pray for baby Lucy and her family, right? All right. Uh, joys or concerns, I'm coming to you. My grandson that's in the Navy, he had his sub christened over the weekend, and he was named... Naval Officer of the Year. All right. <laughs> What's his name? Bryce. Bryce. Yeah. Bri uh, yeah. Bryce. 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 Okay. <laughs> Officer of the Year in the Navy. Wow. We have a Navy veteran here of 36 years. And wow. All right. Hey, it's a joy. Really good thing. Oh, proud. Very proud. 
All right, anyone else? Okay, well, I'm coming to you. So if anybody would like to donate, please contact me. Okay, LaDonna is accepting food for uh, Chilson family and uh, Saturday yeah, Saturday morning. Uh, we'll start at the cemetery at 10 o'clock, and then after that, we'll come back to church, and here we will have a service in the church, and after that, we'll have lunch. So contact LaDonna uh, about it, okay? All right. Anything else? Well, then, let us pray, first of all, uh, in silence. And I ask you to keep in your prayers all these families and uh, baby Lucy. Let us pray. Gracious, gracious and loving God, first of all, we give you thanks for allowing us to be a family of faith in it. We pray for one another. We do so because we believe that when we pray, you hear our prayers and you answer our prayers. So we lift up to you today families of La Vida and Chilson, as they go through this difficult time of grief and missing their loved one. For them, things will be different. They will miss La Vida and Chilson a lot. So we pray that, oh God, your spirit will give them some comfort and peace. And oh God, we are deeply concerned about our baby Lucy. She is hospitalized at this time and she's getting better, we hear. Yet, oh God, we ask you to, you make sure, you make sure that she come out of this just fine and uh, re recover full health. And help her to grow up, oh God, healthy and sound all the time. And uh, uh, we would love to enjoy her among us every day, every moment. And we also pray for your blessings upon all of our children, young people. They bring us so much joy and we know that they are your blessings upon us and we just ask you continue to walk through them and for them and with them. And as our young people make a difference and I, as our little ones bring us such a deep joy, unutterable joy, thank you and we pray that you will watch over them all the time. We are proud of this grandson who serves in the Navy, uh, Bryce, and we pray for his safety and his, his uh, great career in the Navy. We ask you to be with him all the time also. Bless us all, God, as we as a church are going through this difficult time as we grieve and as we 
concerned. But through it all, help us once again experience your presence among us. Help us to hear your voice. Help us to feel your touch. Help us grow as your people, as disciples of Christ. Be with us throughout this time of worship. We pray these things in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, who taught us to pray together, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thou will be done. In there. Good morning, everybody. Tape. 
I watched online. <laughs> so I'm happy, glad you're here. <laughs> I've got something for everybody. That's the trick. Oh, it is. Yes. Okay. All right. Hey, can you help me? Can you hand out one of these sheets to everybody, please? <gasps> Whoa. All right, so Tate's helping me hand something out here. What is on there? I got stickers for everybody. What's on there, guys? What do you see? Rainbows, rainbows. Why do you think we picked rainbows today? What's today? Anybody know? Rainbow. It's Rainbow Day? It kind of is. It's St. Patrick's Day. Now, that's not always talked about as much as it used to be. But what else do we think of on St. Patrick's Day? Some of us are wearing a certain color today. Green. Think of shamrocks. What else do you think of? Memphis. What's, what has something to do with St. Patrick's Day? pot of gold and rainbows so rainbows have been my favorite thing since I was little so I love that today is about rainbows did you know that St. Patrick was a real person though he really was yes so he was a Christian saint who preached God's word and he was in a country trying to change before people didn't want to hear about God and he was changing that you got rainbows yeah okay St. Patrick viewed the rainbow as a representation of God's promise that they would never destroy the earth again. So you have to have two things to have a rainbow. Who knows what they are? It's a little science. What's two things? Rain and sun. Memphis, check, check. Rain and sun. Because it's a reflection off the raindrops. It makes prisms that have those colors in them. That's right. Good job. And what's the very best time to see a real rainbow? Right, so that's what season does it rain the most? What are we getting ready to start right now? Spring. Spring, that's right. So, whoops, can you keep those stickers? I love them, but can you take those stickers home instead? Your mom wants to see them at home, okay? Yeah. We've got some rainbow stickers up here. I'll take care of that later, but it's all good. So there's a very popular verse in the Bible about rainbows. It's from Genesis 9:17, and it says... God said to Noah, yes, the rainbow is the sign of the covenant I am confirming with all creatures on earth. And in our culture, sometimes we think of rainbows mean hope. It brings that better times are coming. So I want you to take those stickers home, and I've got more if anybody didn't come up and you still want some stickers. But it just makes me happy when I see all those colors. What's your favorite color? Rainbow, blue, red. Blue and red. What's your favorite color, Tate? I thought you were going to say purple. Blue. Blue. Okay, the colors are blue. Uh, pink, pink, purple, and teal. Okay. Do you have a favorite color, Hudson? I love red. Red like a fire truck? I love red. That's what I'm going to guess. Okay. Well, I love all the colors in the rainbow. You love red, too? You know what? We all can love the same colors. That's the cool thing. All right. Let's say a quick prayer, and then you'll get a snack, Okay. We thank you, Lord, for the beauty that rain brings, especially the rainbows. And we thank you for giving us all hope that good things are coming. Amen. All right. You may have a snack.
join me in the blessing of the offering. God of the ages, we share our tithes and offerings this day with, but we acknowledge the most of the time we are clinging tightly to what we have, afraid we might lose something we need, and afraid somehow there won't be enough to live our lives. It's a huge mindset overtakes us, and it robs us of the joy of our days. Remind us that Jesus has called us to be ready to let go of his life so that we might claim the abundance of life Redeemer's name we pray. Amen. Please remain standing for today's scripture reading, which comes from 1 Kings chapter 19. Then Jezebel sent a messenger to Elijah, saying, So may the gods do to me and more also, if I do not take your life by this time tomorrow. Then he was afraid. He got up and fled for his life and came to Beersheba. He went a day's journey into the wilderness and came and sat under the solitary broom tree. He asked that he might die. It is enough now, O Lord, take away my life, for I am no, no better than my ancestors. Then he lay down under the broom tree and fell asleep. Then a great and powerful wind tore the mountains apart and shattered the rocks before the Lord. But the Lord was not in the wind. After the wind, there was an earthquake. But the Lord was not in the earthquake. After the earthquake came a fire, but the Lord was not in the fire. And after the fire came a gentle whisper. This is the word of God for the people of God. Message has just popped up. Uh, the technology, they don't know where they are actually. I mean, on Sunday morning in church. But anyway, have you ever prayed that the Lord might take your life away? Have you ever said to the, to the Lord, I don't want to be anymore? Take my life. Obviously, you have never prayed that. If you have, you might not be here because the Lord tends to answer your prayers. So I'm glad you never prayed that. So when we pray, it's usually uh, to get out of some trouble, some issues, or some challenges, some difficulties. So usually when you pray, oh, Lord, help me. Help me get through this. Give me the strength to deal with all these challenges. So when you pray, it's usually for you or for your loved one, not to give up your own life. And when we pray, we have this belief or hope or, or trust that when the Lord answers our prayers, things will get better or things will change. If things won't change, I will change. So there are certain expectations, certain hope, and then there's a trust. So this prayer is one of the most powerful acts of trust, or act of faith that we can offer. So for whatever reason, praying to die, I mean to, to let go of his own life, that was really unusual. What if the Lord answered that prayer? Okay. It 
see, unless you really mean it, you don't pray for your own death, right? If there are people who are really praying, hoping to die, then I wonder why or, you know, what makes them do so or what, what is it that they are going through? What is it that makes them so desperate that they want to die and they pray to die? That's exactly what this young, uh, what, uh, what this man named Elijah did. I mean, he was a prophet. What is a prophet? He's a messenger of God's message. So God tells him to go and, and, and say these words to people, then that's his job. He goes around and tells people what God told him. That's the prophet, and that was his job. And what it means is he was working for the Lord. Now, he did, in fact, a great thing for the Lord. Do you remember what he did? Well, here is his background story, actually. It was a time when there were two kingdoms in Israel, and there is a, the northern kingdom called Israel. And Ahab was the king at the time, and his policy for his country's prosperity was to get in good relationship with neighboring countries. So he tried to make alliances with other states around them, surrounding them. And the alliance was this particular country, Sinichans. It was cemented by his marriage with a uh, marriage to uh, a, a woman named Jezebel. Jezebel. <laughs> that name spelled trouble for Israel because she, the queen, brought with her her own religion. And in order to promote her God named, some of you know this God as Baal, uh, it is Baal, B-A-A-L, that's how we spell it in English. So she wanted to promote her God. And so she brought ton of the prophets for that God or religion. And then began persecuting or kicking out or killing God's prophets. And so Eliza was one of those prophets who got persecuted by this queen, Jezebel. And one day God gave him the message, hey, you go and challenge these false prophets and beat them. And so God gave them like a three years and a half of drought no rain, so they were in trouble. The land was so dry, stopped producing anything. So people were just so starving. And then Eliza uh, uh, showed himself before this queen and the prophets and said, hey, let there be a competition. In other words, let me prove that my God is the real one and yours is a false god. Let's do this. So they did this duel. I mean, actually not a, really a duel. There are a ton of prophets for that religion, that deity, that god called ba Baal. And then there was only one prophet for the Lord, Eliza. And the competition was, so you, you, you set up an altar and you put uh, logs, woods, and you set the fire, and, and, and then your, your, your God, if that is a real one, will give uh, a rain to this land. If you fail, then I will show you uh, the power of my God. And so the prophets of this false God, they did their thing. They prayed, and they fasted, and they even cut themselves and they became bloody as they were praying for rain to their God 
name Baal. Nothing happened. Nothing happened. No matter what they did, just there was no raindrop. Not even a Methodist parade. Nothing. And then Eliza was like, hey, see? See what's happening? You got his balls. Maybe he's out on a trip. Maybe he's sick. Maybe he's, he doesn't care. Oh, maybe he doesn't even exist. Hey, hey, he was making fun of his false prophet. And then he said, now my turn. And he set this firewood up and had a sacrifice. And he had his, all this firewood wet. So, yeah. You see how my God lights up this wet wood. And he prayed very well. God answered his prayer. So, long story short, Eliza won. And a terrible thing happened. He had all these false prophets seized and then eventually killed. Now this, this queen, Jezebel, she got so mad. She got really angry over Eliza. You see, she wanted to promote her God. And then all the, the prophets were defeated. It's, it's shameful enough, bad enough. And then all these prophets who worked for her got killed. So you did this, you, Eliza, I'm going to have you killed by this time tomorrow. Otherwise, I'm, so she was about to seize Eliza and kill him. And Eliza got so scared, he ran. He ran and ran and ran. Then he came under this broom tree, and he was so tired. He was so tired, and then he was so scared. I don't know what was going through his mind at the time, but one thing I can imagine is he was just at a point where he found no reason to go on. I mean, I did my job, God. I did it for you. I brought glory to your name. And now, as a result, my life is being threatened. I had to journey through this wilderness for like so many days and I don't have food, don't have water. I'm about to die anyway, so God, why don't you go ahead and, and, and end my life so that my misery ends with it? So desperate, so down, no hope, and probably a lot of frustration and I mean, fear. That's when, and that's why he prayed that the Lord end his life right there. And then all, after a while, he moved on, and he went on on another uh, 40 days journey and then he found himself in a deeper wilderness and uh, he ended up uh, uh, in a mountain, uh, Horeb and uh, the name of the mountain and then it's also called Mount of God and he found a cave there and uh, he spent the night there and then the Lord came to him and said what are you doing here Eliza? Okay you get it? I mean, the Lord was not there when he fled from the threat of death. At least that's how Eliza felt. And then when he prayed that he might die, God didn't say a word. And all of a sudden, in this isolated place, in the cave, God found him, uh, found him and said, what are you doing here, Eliza? What are you doing here, Eliza? That's 
question, you know, God, do you think asked this question because God did not really know what Elijah was doing? God wanted to find out what Elijah was doing in the cave? I believe what God is saying is, you're not supposed to be here. You're supposed to be elsewhere. You're supposed to be doing your job. You're supposed to continue your work as a prophet. You shouldn't be here. I think that was the message that was included in this voice of God. What are you doing here? And then he says, well, of course, I worked hard for you and brought glory to you, and now my life is being threatened. Mm -hmm. And he said, God said, well, go out and stand on the mountain in the presence of the Lord because the Lord is about to pass by. Wow, that's a, that's a something special that is being allowed uh, uh, this, uh, through, through Elijah. Mm -hmm. God will pass by. Now, here's the thing. I mean, when I find myself in wilderness, and I think you uh, you will do the same, you are in the wilderness when you feel exhausted, feel desperate, there seems to be no hope. And maybe you are threatened, maybe you are afraid. And you want of God to pass by, symbolically speaking. Right? What, what you really want is when you pray in the wilderness, you want to hear God speaking to you, giving you an assurance that everything will be fine. I want to I want to hear that. I would love to hear God tell me everything is going to be fine. I'll make sure of it. I love you, my child. You are gonna be fine. I'd love to hear it. Every time I pray, that's what I wanna hear. No? I pray for you. I want God tell me, my child. Your prayers are answered. Your people will be blessed fine. I'll make sure of that. I'd love to hear that. That's what you feel. It's been hard for me. I mean, it started when some of our church members chose to leave our congregation. Well, they have their reasons. I respect that. But that, their, their departure, they're leaving the congregation. That hurt me. That hurt me big time, really big time. I love them. I love them no matter what. So that's where it began. That hurt me. And then the last two, two church members. And every time I look, that happened, I praise God. God, I need this, this church. I, I, I need you to them get healthy again. I need them back in our church. I pray that. I pray that. And when I pray that, I am desperate. That's normal, I believe. If I want God to, to speak to me and say, hey, I'll make sure that, that your people be all right. Does it happen to you? I believe it does. It's not all the time. It, you, you may not feel that. It may seem as if God is out there doing his thing and not caring about us. It may seem that. Maybe the, like the, the, the guy, I mean, the God named Baal, I mean, he, he, he doesn't care about his prophets at all. He's not out there, I mean, he's out there doing his thing. Who knows what? But the fact of the matter is, when I pray, I pray for the best for me, for my people, for you, 
And I believe that the Lord hears my prayer and answers my prayer. Looking back throughout my ministry of like 26 years, there are hundreds of prayers that God has answered. But there are times when it's so hard. And then I'll say to God, please speak to me. Speak to me in such a way that I hear you. But here is what I believe is important thing. In this story, you know, the scripture says there was a strong wind and that wind tore apart the mountains and shattered the rock. But the Lord was not in the wind. And then there was The Lord was not in the earthquake. And there was fire. But the Lord was not in the fire. And then came a gentle whisper. That's a New Revised Standard Version of Bible uh, uh, translation. Instead of a gentle whisper, it says, there was a sheer silence. Now, here's what I think is happening. So, Elijah was looking for the presence of God in all the earth. He wanted to see God pass him by, probably looking for God in the wind and earthquake and, and fire, all these awesome things. But God was not in those things, but in this sheer silence, in this gentle whisper of slight wind, just gentle whisper or sheer silence. There was silence in so, of course, when I pray, I want to hear God say to me that everything is going to be all right. But then I need to remind myself, you know, in this silence, there is a voice of God. I need to listen to that. I need to figure out what God is telling me in this silence or in this gentle whisper. So, you know, prayer. Prayer is a very strong expression of our faith. We pray because we know God hears our prayer. We pray because we believe God will answer our prayer. But what happens when we feel as if God is not listening to our prayer? When we feel that God is away, or when we feel that God doesn't care, it's all wrong. I mean, God is always with you, even through and in the silence. There is a gentle whisper, and in that gentle whisper, it says, all we have to do is open our eyes, open our ears, and listen to that gentle voice. You find God in that. And then you hear God say to you, I love you, my child. You are going to be in good hands. You hear that? You hear that? stand if you are able and join with me in the hymn of response let there be peace on earth from page 431 
sing the Lord is God, and communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. Go in peace.